Hello everyone, my name is Wesley Yeoman and I am co-founder and COO of Lunalites where we have created an automated lighting system that utilizes cloud-based data analytics to prevent and detect falls for older adults. Our team initially got interested in this issue because we all personally have had experiences with grandparents falling. We've seen firsthand how falls affect the lives of older adults and their families. This is a universal problem and I'm sure many people in the audience have had similar experiences with loved ones. At Northwestern University's Design for America Summer Studio Program, we researched this topic for six weeks and saw how big of an issue it really is. Falls are the number one cause of injury for adults 65 and older. At senior living communities, places designed to keep older adults safe, half of their residents fall each year. This number is staggering, and when we looked into it further, we found these falls occur, 25% of the time occur at night. This is especially concerning because there's reduced staff and reduced visibility at night, and falls are occurring behind closed doors. If a person's been on falls and has been on the ground for a long period of time, their condition can worsen. There are competitors out there that do offer fall monitoring solutions. They're generally categorized into wearable and non-wearable technology. Wearable technology can be effective if used correctly. However, there's lower compliance with these devices at nighttime as people are taking off their pendants and their bracelets. Non-wearable technology, such as those complex sensor networks, can collect a lot of valuable data. However, there's high costs for installation and complex setup. A lot of these communities do not have the necessary resources for upkeep, and a lot of older adults do not enjoy the feeling of feeling monitored in their every move. All of these solutions do not offer a preventative measure. They are all passive monitoring systems. That's where we thought, what if we could make something that keeps older adults safe and is something that they actually want to use? That's where Lunalites comes in. Lunalites incorporates a unique pressure sensor that's placed underneath the sheets of a user's bed. When a person sits up at night, the sensor senses the change in pressure and triggers small, low-lying lights around the room to turn on and guide them to their destination. When they lie back down, the lights turn off seamlessly. If a person has been out of bed for an extended period of time, the system can send a text message or page alert to a caregiver, letting them know that this individual may have fallen and they should, they should go check on this person. The system also collects behavioral data, such as how many times a person gets up in the middle of the night, and a caregiver can view this data online and see if there's any indication from trends of a bigger medical issue. Another thing that makes Luna Lights unique is its tangible benefit for older adults. They see the lights and they enjoy using the system and they see that they don't have to make any kind of compromise in their nighttime experience. In order to initially sell to the over 31,000 assisted living communities that house over 750,000 residents, we need to have a strong economic incentive. Luna Lights will increase revenue for senior living communities by acting as a marketing tool attracting new residents. It will also reduce fall rates, therefore increasing occupancy levels and keeping more people healthy and, ha healthy, healthy and happy in their homes. For example, example, if a person falls and has to leave the community to seek medical attention, it can take them up to six months to return to their community. Communities can incur costs up to $3,500 a month for these vacant rooms due to falls. Lunalites reduces the chance that a person's gonna fall, have to leave this community, and thereby reducing the overall cost for these communities. And Lunalites does this at the fraction of a price of its competitors. Now we are fortunate enough to have participated in the Health Box Accelerator Program in Chicago last fall where we gained a lot of mentorship and advice on how to run our business as well as expand to future markets such as the individual consumer. Entering the program, we really only had a few functional lights, and leaving the program, we have a fully functioning prototype that incorporates our hardware and software components, and we are patent pending. <coughs> we were able to successfully implement our technology at our first pilot test at the Mather in Evanston. We put our product into the hands of users and saw that they really enjoyed this tangible benefit. We also saw how we could improve our technology for future use and are using the prototyping funds that we received from Stanford to implement these improvements. In the spring, we will be working with Presbyterian Homes in Chicago to collect more fall data and see how the system really reduces fall rates. We'll also be looking at staff interaction to see how they react to text message alerts as well as the data tracking. 
We're also very excited because we have upcoming plans to work with three additional communities in the Chicago area on more pilot tests. None of this would have been possible without our team, or team of advisors who have helped us on all aspects of our business, from marketing to really understanding the senior care industry. We also have a great team. Again, my name is Wesley. Uh, my two co-founders and I have engineering backgrounds from Northwestern University. We all believe that our technical expertise and passion will keep older adults ha healthy, healthy and happy uh, <laughs> while using Loom Lights. Thank you, and please let me know if you have any questions. Okay, thank you. I'm sure there will be questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, great talk, James Landay from Stanford. Mike, um, I think this problem's, you know, probably happened to a lot of people. My dad actually died of falling in a hospital bed, getting up at night. And one thing I'm curious about is, do you know that a lot of it's due to lighting versus people are groggy or sedated at night and they're waking up? And do you have any data that would that tell us lighting is the key? Yeah, we've seen um, in our past research that having a source of light does help with balance and kind of gauging when you wake up, it, it gives you a point of reference. Um, we don't have any data necessarily if lighting is the main issue that's causing these nighttime falls, but we've, we've seen that, you know, everybody sees that they can have some kind of assistive lighting to help them see their path at night. It could really be helpful for people. Is it Chris? A question on the front and then we'll go to the back. Great, uh, Layla from Google World Economic Forum. Um, it's great that you've actually done some pilot testing and I'm kind of curious to know if there's any behavioral metrics you might have gathered so far for decreasing um, falls at night at the original place that you tested. Um, and second question is just, have you seen or talked with users yet about issues of privacy just because the bedroom is a very private space? So curious to hear if you've learned lessons there. Definitely. Um, our first pilot test was a lot more about user acceptance and really seeing um, this is the first time we gave the product to people for an extended period of time. So it was more around just kind of initial reactions and interactions with that. Um, and we got a lot of really great feedback. Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat the second part of your question? In terms of acceptance, were there any issues okay. around privacy or thoughts yes, around how yes. to protect that? Um, we actually uh, haven't received any feedback on that from older adults. We have heard from communities about, you know, is this going to be HIPAA compliant for text messages and things like that. And, you know, we are, we are going to be HIPAA compliant, keep our servers secure, and making sure these text messages are only being received by caregivers or people who have permission to see that information. Yes, uh, uh, I am from um, I am from Kaiser Permanente. Uh, my name is Rana H. Uh, I work at Innovation and Advanced Technology, and we are working this kind of um, innovations. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, my question is: uh, Do you send? I mean, I I am trying to understand the workflow. I mean, uh, you have a pressure belt on the bed, right? Mm -hmm. So the patient, I mean, whoever, I mean, the older person gets up from the bed, so the moment uh, he or she gets up, uh, you send an alert, text alert, right? And then, if then Luna Light, it, Luna Lights uh, helps, right, uh, mm -hmm. to go to the bathroom or restroom or whatever. Now, if the person falls, then you, do you send alert? Yeah, so I can clarify a little bit more about the process of how that works. Thanks. So um, what happens when a person initially sits up and the sensor senses that change in pressure, it triggers the lights to turn on. That's not necessarily the alert. Um, the alert is set up so that you can customize it for any individual and you want it to be sent as soon as the person sits up or they've been out of bed for an extended period, for an hour, if, that's, if they're more independent and they feel that they can return to bed pretty easily. Um, so when the system knows that it's it reached that time period, so it's been an hour and the sensor doesn't sense that there's a person on the bed, that's when the alert will be sent out. So. Uh, Lily Serafin, just a couple of questions. I couldn't tell from the photo, are the lights tracked on the wall or is it like a strip on the floor? Yeah, so there are small portable lights that have adhesive that stick on the wall, so you can place them, again, allows more customization for people so they can really make the path to their bathroom that they need. 
So if the path from the bed to the bathroom, say, were across the center of the room, the lights would still be against the wall? Yes. OK. Um, and in your sort of user um, studies, was the problem that the individual did not turn on their light, say, a night light or a lamp on a nightstand, and they were trying to make it there in the dark? And how yeah. often is that the case? Yeah, so from our testing, we saw that a lot of people, in terms of night lights, just wanted to sleep in complete dark darkness and just didn't want to use that um, as an assistive tool. And um, we also heard just people, when you get older, your bladder, you know, you can't hold it as well, so people would try to fumble for the light switch and just couldn't get it in time, would just start going to the head of the bathroom, so they would just go in the dark and run into something or trip and fall. Yeah, I think that's time for one more question. Hi. Darren Sable from Orange. Uh, how would you address two people sleeping in the same bed? Yeah, so we're actually we're testing that. That's something that we definitely need to work on more. But the strip is a certain length that it can you can do two systems, have two strips. So each individual only certain lights turn on for the one individual getting out of bed. It's very customizable, and we're still working on developing that part of it. Yeah. Okay, we have seconds if we can squeeze. Uh, my name is Carrie Portis. I'm curious why you aren't also targeting initially the consumer market, residential? Sure. So um, we wanted to start with assisted living communities because we felt as we were developing, it would give us a wide range of users that could be using um, our product, as well as assisted living communities can make large purchases. Um, so that would really help us in this early stage, but we are definitely planning on expanding to the individual consumer because there definitely is a very great need for people who are aging in place in their home. Okay, thank you, Leonice. Thank you.